who dragged him into a witchcraft circle, took the boy naked and nicked his scrotum with an athame. I'm sorry, that's paedophilia. Before 1963, there is no word gardenarium being used in Wicca or witchcraft. Nobody uses the term. The reason being is that it was originally a term of insult. We have a magazine at home from 1963 where somebody turns around and says, these gardenarians. There is no divisions before that. Suddenly there is this idea of these divisions between traditions that begins to occur, so particularly when Sanders comes along. Because Sanders originally wants to be gardenarian. He goes to the crowders. He wants to be initiated by them. They take an instant dislike to him. So he goes and gets initiated by another priestess, including one which originated from the gardenarians, Pat Kapinski. He wants to separate himself from the gardenarians. He calls <coughs> his tradition Alexandrian. Now you've got this division. You've got the hereditaries, you've got the Gardenarians, the Alexandrians, they're all practicing witchcraft. The Alexandrians are just practicing Gardenarian. There's a few minor differences because the Book of Shadows they've got has evolved from the original one. So now you've got Sanders practicing, and he used the basis of high magic. The other thing <coughs> he does is something else. <coughs> With your traditional occult, a traditional occultism in England was upper class. Gardner brings it down to middle <coughs> class. Sanders brings it down to working blue collar class. Because at that time, up till the early 60s, <coughs> Britain is class bound. So this is what Sanders does. He brings it down to that level. Now you've got people who have been in basically secondary modern schools and grammar schools are going, they who haven't been to university, are coming into witchcraft. Of course, the Gardenarians don't want anything to do with the Alexandrians, the hereditary hereditaries don't want anything to do with the Gardenarians, and the Alexandrians don't want anything to do with anyone. So now you've got this going on, and you've got these partitions, they're all practicing the same thing. But this is now getting into the mid-60s, and there are changes going on in consciousness. It's the hippie era. The class system in Britain is breaking down. You've got the rise of feminism. Suddenly, the goddess becomes more important in people's consciousness, particularly in witchcraft. Much more. So now, the importance of women becomes more important in witchcraft as well. To be blunt. Although it's still dominated but, by yeah. a high priest figure. Who still had the attitude is that once you are hoth, being young, and in the bloom of beauty, you step down in favour of a younger, more sexually attractive woman. That's there the was no was. such thing as the crowning of women, no respect for elder women. Oh, and by the way, the same thing for men. Once a high priest was past his vigour, he was supposed to step down as well, in favour of a younger, <coughs> healthier stag god. It was very sexist. That's all what's happening in Britain. What's happening in the States is something slightly different. Oh, yes. Ray Buckland, as I mentioned earlier, thanks for the came to the States back in the 60s, <coughs> initiated Gardnerian. <coughs> when he comes to the States, he sets up a Gardnerian cult on the east coast of the States. One of the people he initiated also was Ed Fitch. Um, he starts to get fed up with people taking Wicca as being doctrinal and rigid. He breaks up with his wife and in the end he breaks away from Gardnerian completely because he's fed up with the fact of the way it's gone in the States, particularly with the Long Island covers, because they have taken everything so rigidly, which is where this whole thing of him being pissed came from. So on top of this you've got the rise of feminism. You've got the Dianics appearing as well. Some of that is later to influence the craft in England back in the 80s. So all these things are coming, mixing in to one big cauldron over time. 
and witchcraft is evolving. It's changing. In England, Sanders realises there's no training because the fact is there is no training in Wicca up until the end of the 60s. It's not there. Sanders introduced Basically, as Dorian Valiant, he said to gather myself back in my day, he just got in a circle and got on with it. There was no training. In America, Ed Fitch introduces it in the late 60s and into the 70s with the pagan way. So now you've got training finally begins to appear in witchcraft in some form. Coming to the 70s, you start to get feminism rise even more. So you get the goddess consciousness. That becomes more important. Alexandrian and Gardnerian in the 70s pretty, stays pretty much the same. But then in the 1980s, now a change occurs. And it's got nothing to do with witchcraft. It's about shamanism. Because Michael Hanna publishes his book, The Way of Shaman. And now, rather than just being a witch, or involved in acid tree, or a druid, you now have people who want to be in, involved in shamanism. Some of those people are in witchcraft, and they begin to take these bits of shamanism and bring it into witchcraft as well. And that's where another change occurs. Because now people are going, wait a minute, do we really need these rigid systems? Do we really need a degree system? And where's the spiritual connection? Because when you practice shamanism, it's working with spirits. And people are looking at Wiccan saying, well, we've been stuck with this whole concept of God and Goddess, but we want to make the same connection you make with time or with divinity. Because up until the 90s, that wasn't occurring. It was not encouraged in mainstream Wiccan. You joined a coven, and you were told, if you were Gardner and Alexander, well, you work for Aradia, and you work for Tainano, or go to Tainano, which is in Alexandria. Those were your workers. You don't work in personal deity. It's a foreign concept. It begins to occur in the 80s because of this inbuilt <coughs> shamanism. And that the priest, uh, precept idea, all gods are one god, right. all goddesses are one goddess. Oh, no, they're not. So now you begin to get other traditions of witchcraft begin to appear. And they're not using a ritual magic model anymore. Of course, Gardnerian had a ritual magic model from Crowley. Alexander's was his main way of working magic was ritual magic. They want an animal model. So people start to experiment. New traditions, new ideas. And one of the mothers of modern witchcraft, in fact the mother of modern witchcraft, Doran Valiente, was all for it. Because she said if it doesn't change, it will self-destruct. Gardner said it himself, he said it's Doran Valiente. The problem with this religion <coughs> is we've got too many chiefs and not enough Indians, and I don't think it's going to survive to the end of the 60s. He honestly thought that. So now, come the 90s, you see another change. If you look at books, because it all starts with books. It starts with Gardner reading a book. It starts with me reading a book. It starts with Janet reading a book. It will start with a lot of you reading a book. Um, we, were, we all are brought up Judeo-Christian background. We were all brought up with that idea of the book and the word. And that was one of the main problems. By the 80s, people are beginning to shed that off. Because you now have a generation coming up who are not brought up in a Judeo-Christian background. They were taught to look around, certainly in the UK. So this is occurring as well. So people are going, why should we practice things this way? They're also from that influence of Hana and shamanism, and they want that connection with spirituality. And if you look at books on witchcraft before the 1990s, the first obvious thing is they are all witchcraft, not Wicca. And after, from the beginning of the 90s and the early 80s, now a word appears, spirituality. Because what has been happening is a process. It's been an evolution. 
It's been going on since Gardner. Now, there's an old Gardnerian called 